If you've been following me here on Minus the Gym, you know some of my favorite exercises don't require any equipment, just a floor and possibly a wall. But then I have other exercises I like doing that do require equipment. And in some cases, this equipment goes beyond execution. You need reliable equipment for safety. So in this video, I'll show you all the equipment I use and let you know which ones I recommend and which I don't recommend. So the first piece of equipment I recommend anyone invest in for their home gym is definitely a set of dip bars, okay? The reason why is that dips are great. They're a fundamental, like foundational exercise in calisthenics that you'll be doing whether you're beginner, intermediate, or advanced. But also, as a beginner, you can use dip bars to get beneath them and start doing what's called body weight rows. And I've explained this in other videos, but basically with body weight rows, you're working on scapular retraction, which is this movement, pulling your, your shoulder blades together. The dip station that I have is made by a company called Ultimate Body Press. Now there's tons of other dip stations out there, and I'm not saying you need to buy this one. I'm just explaining why I like this brand. It's high quality for the amount of money that you're paying. And also, these are collapsible. There's a metal button on the front and back legs, and if you squeeze the button, you can actually pull the bars apart and collapse them down so that they can easily fit in a closet or beneath a bed. Okay, we changed scenery just a little bit. I'm over here by my studio door. I opened the door and I put up the pull-up bar. Reason being that the second piece of equipment I highly recommend, especially when you're starting out, is a pull-up bar, specifically a doorway pull-up bar. The reason why I recommend a doorway pull-up bar is because it's easy to assemble, it's easy to put up, right? There's a crossbar here, if I can show you. There's just a crossbar across the top here and it rests on top of your door jam. And once it's up there, I mean, it's up there, it's not coming down. A lot of people worry that their body weight, you know, won't be held by the pull-up bar or their door frame won't support it, but all those details are in the product description when you go to buy these on Amazon or wherever you go. So I recommend starting off with a doorway pull-up bar and once you get to a point that you're ready to advance and start doing muscle ups and, and getting over the bar, that's when you start branching out into building your own pull-up bar. Now I built my own pull-up bar in my backyard and it's cemented into the ground, but you can make them freestanding for indoors and you can even buy freestanding pull-up bars too. Unfortunately, I don't remember the exact name of the manufacturer of this pull-up bar that I have. Um, I wanna say it's Iron Gym or something like that. But what I'll do is I'll put links for not just this pull-up bar, but all of the equipment that I'm talking about in this video, I'll put them in the description down below if you wanna check them out. The next piece of equipment that I use is fitness bands, okay? And there's really two types of fitness bands. There's assistance and resistance. Now, when I say assistance bands, I'm referring to the round ones. They're just a loop and they're really good for when you're working on pull-ups or front lever or any kind of skill that you're trying to build up. They can provide assistance if you put them around a bar and then loop it around your feet or around your, your torso. It basically works um, against gravity and is, is helping pull you up. This is what they look like when they're not wrapped up with a rubber band. Just a loop that you can use for assistance. Now, resistance bands are different because they have handles attached to them and their primary purpose is to basically be used for isolation movements. The resistance bands I'm referring to come with multiple colored bands that identify the amount of resistance. They also have handles that you attach to the ends so you can grab them and use them for various exercises. The method I like using is a compound exercise such as chin-ups or body weight rows to partially exhaust my biceps in this example and then I would go immediately to a superset of using the fitness bands or resistance bands, I should say, to completely burn out my biceps by doing biceps curls. The next set of equipment that I recommend and I use quite often are parallettes. All right, and parallettes might look like a dip station because they're two parallel bars, but they're actually much different, all right, because they are two separate bars that you can move different distances away from each other, plus they're low to the ground, making them very stable for inversions. 
So if you plan on learning handstands on parallel bars, you're gonna want some parallettes. Trust me on that. Don't try doing a handstand on your dip station. It's very dangerous and I learned that the hard way. So if you plan on learning the tucked planche, L-sit, V-sit, things like that, you could use a dip station for that. But if you wanna do handstands, make sure you get yourself some parallettes. And the parallettes that I use are also made by Ultimate Body Press, the same manufacturer that makes my dip station. But there's tons of different parallettes out there. So shop around if you want, find something that works for you. Uh, what I like about mine is that they're very high off the ground. They're about 12 inches off the ground and I believe they're two feet long. So they're really big and I like that because it's a lot to work with and when you finally get to real parallel bars like at a calisthenics park or a gymnastics gym, uh, it'll feel like the real thing. These are very similar to real parallel bars. All right, you might have also noticed that I have this basket here by my workout stuff. And that's because it's just a simple solution to store all the little things that I have. And one of those little things that I wanna show you is gymnastics rings, all right? Rings are awesome. They are absolutely, I, I highly recommend using rings, but I'm going to say that they are mainly for intermediate level and beyond, all right? When you're a beginner and you try using rings, you're gonna find them very difficult. The thing about rings is they provide 360 degrees of movement in swing and rotation. So any common exercise like dips becomes extremely unstable. But even if you're a beginner, you can still use rings for things like body weight rows and other beginner exercises. So I would say even if you're a beginner, don't hesitate to buy these if you have the money. They are extremely beneficial for calisthenics. All right, what do you say we look at more of the odds and ends that I have in this basket, as well as things like this BOSU that I'm sitting on right now? Okay, the first item in the basket we're gonna look at is the ab wheel. And I think this is a very underestimated piece of equipment and I highly recommend it. A lot of people when they hear ab wheel, they think of the abs or six pack on the front of the core, but the ab wheel goes way beyond that. It works your lower back, your obliques, I mean pretty much the entire core and even your back. And what I'm referring to when I say the back is when you roll out, see here I'm at the very top and I roll out to the bottom. And when I reach the bottom, I'm fully extended. This is really working my lats. So the quote unquote ab wheel goes way beyond the abs, working your back, your shoulders, and other parts of your body. So for the price tag, which is pretty cheap at 10 or 12 bucks, I highly recommend it. But there are some things I don't recommend. And one of them is this thing to the left here, the BOSU. That half ball thing, yeah, I never really use it and I don't recommend it. But the thing on the right, the stability ball, that is something I do use once in a while. And if you can fork up the extra 20, 25 bucks to get one, it's pretty good to have. I like using the stability ball for random core exercises. Like here I'm doing what's called jackknives. But to be honest, although stability balls are good to train your core and balance, I don't consider them a requirement or a necessity for calisthenics. They're just nice to have. And I have this reflex bag, which is basically a punching bag that bounces back at you after you hit it. And I don't know if I use it correctly, but I'll be honest, it's a lot of fun to hit. So there you have it. Those are all the different pieces of equipment that I currently train with and the ones I recommend and don't recommend. You can train with them in so many different ways. I mean, I'm tempted to say there's infinite possibilities here. And if you're new to my channel, Minus the Gym, I want you to know it's all about calisthenics-based fitness and healthy, wholesome nutrition. So if that sounds up your alley, make sure you subscribe. I'll put a subscribe button right here on the screen, and there's always the big red button down below. All right, guys, and with that said, I will talk to you in the next video.